From previous projects like the dining table build and other builds that I used rough lumber from the sawmill, I always end up with a lot of off-cut pieces and over time they just stack up. These pieces are cherry and beech offcuts with big knots and bad cracks, that's why I cut them off in the first place of course. And now I think it's a good opportunity to fill all of these defects with some resin, then prepare them to blanks for turning and make a lot of plates or little bolts out of them. I marked all places where I need to fill in some resin with some chalk. When the cracks go all the way through like here, I can't just fill in the resin because that will just flow out on the other side again and make a mess. So I need to tape one side off, but since this is still rough lumber, I also need to prepare this surface so that the tape will stick properly. I mean the hand plane is nice and all, but sometimes the belt sander is just better. Next I clean the cavities as much as possible with compressed air and the shop bag. And then taping it off. Next is mixing the resin and to get the 2 to 1 mixing ratio I use a kitchen scale and this time I actually need quite a bit. 100 grams of resin and now 50 grams of hardener. Almost. And I also want to give it some color, therefore I have some food color. I want to try green. This color is quite thick, so I'm using a straw. Put my finger on top of it to get some out of that. I think I need a bit more color. About five minutes of mixing later I can pour it into all the cracks. The first batch wasn't quite enough so I mixed some more and dyed it in red. That now can cure for a day. While the epoxy is drying, I can prepare the other blanks on the bandsaw and make them into circles. And I could use my nice little bandsaw circle jig, but I don't think it's actually worth it. So I'm just marking some circles with a compass and cut them out freehand. On some pieces I forgot to mark the center, but that's no problem for my 3D printed center finder. For finding the rough center, this method is good enough. With the center mark I can now eyeball center a faceplate and screw it down. And now the fun of turning the whole workshop into a complete mess begins. I quickly assemble my chuck. Now I can make a mark that tells me where I need to cut a mortise for the chuck to fit into. Right here. The outside shape is now done and I already want to finish sand it so I don't have to care about it anymore when I turn it around to turn the inside. And this time I want to try something new for sanding. I 3D printed an adapter that directly threads onto the angle grinder and it has a 50mm velcro attachment with foam backing for these little sanding discs that I'm using normally. 
It sounds really aggressive and that's perfect for the lower grids, exactly what I want. When remounting the bowl with the chuck, I like to align it with the help of the tailstock because that fits perfectly in the hole of the faceplate. And that will then ensure that it won't wobble much. What comes now is really important, so watch closely. Oops. Um, I guess that's a problem. So after I spent half an hour making round firewood, I went on with the next one. And there I have the first finished little bowl. All this then got repeated a few times until the shop, especially at the lathe area, was in a yeah quite disastrous state, especially behind the lathe as you can see here. So I quickly cleaned that up before I went on with the resin bolts. So now let's have a look at all the resin stuff. This looks good. This one will be interesting. That came all the way through and made a little bit of the mess also on the table. But it came out pretty good. Now I again marked circles strategically on the pieces so that I think I'll get the most out of the resin look on my finished bowls or plates. That'll be interesting. Well, bullshit just happens. The bow with the most visible resin part happens to have a nail right here. And also destroyed a little bit of my tool. Well, let's try pulling that out and see if we can save that bow. And that chisel now also reads a resharpen. It snapped off. Great! Huh. That looked like it was all of it. It was not. Yes, more metal. Well, a few things happened. I managed to get more of that metal out. Some is still in there, but now I just don't reduce the diameter a lot. And there was another crack showing up that I now filled with more resin. And then I got sick for a week and well, now I can go on. are now ready for finish which is oil and a few of them I already did oil but before that I have to do a whole workshop cleanup and it's done video editing is just magical for the finish I'm using this hard oil which is food safe once it's fully cured to apply it I have a small piece of cloth and I do it in two stages just the outside for now and then I let it dry for a little bit, remove the excess and then I can do the inside. The end grain parts require a bit more because in the first coat they just drink up that oil in no time. 
and the lightly transparent greenish epoxy looks pretty cool. Now after the last one I can already wipe away the excess on the first one. And now do the inside. After the first coat cured for 24 hours, I then use a fine sanding sponge to knock down the raised grain. However, with this oil, there isn't really much grain that gets raised, so that's pretty cool. But still, a quick sanding in between the second coat makes the second coat a lot nicer and the finished product. And this is how one looks then after three coats. And that pretty much finishes this project. Now with such a bowl that I want to use for food, for salad to be specific, I use five coats of that oil and then let it cure for two weeks. And that's how long it takes for this oil to really fully cure. It's unfortunate that it takes that long, but I think it's worth it. Also, let me know if you're interested in this sanding pad adapter for the angle grinder. I have an idea how to make this in a simple way without a 3D printer and well I think it's a great tool for the lathe so let me know if you're interested in the comments. And finally a question that never gets answered because nobody asks. This is the amount of sanding pads that I used for all these bolts. It was up to 240 grit and I used about one disc per grit every two bolts. So. It actually is quite good considering this small sanding area and the big sanding surface of two bolts, so quite efficient. And then prepare them for bowl blanks, well, um, 